Ladies and gentlemen, very welcome to uh, Green Connection. My name is Peter Larsson. I'm uh, working for Scandinavian Airlines within the Green Connection uh, project. Uh, we are standing at Oxford uh, Aviation Academy at Stockholm Arland Airport. And what you see here in the background is one of Oxford's uh, 737-700 simulators. And very soon we'll go inside and uh, my colleague uh, Anders Bokqvist will take over and show you the RMP approach we have developed within this project. Uh, first, a little bit about the general benefits of the uh, RMP approach. Firstly, you can adapt it very accurately along rivers and industrial areas. And uh, by that you could save uh, some noise for uh, uh, vicinity community surrounding our airport. And the other part, of course, is very important with the emission saving and also economy for the airlines with the fuel savings uh, involved. Also, you have a very good track adherence on these approaches. So for air traffic controllers, they are very predictable. They will uh, fly more or less on a red line uh, day in and day out. And uh, they are a great uh, enabler for what we call green approach or to be able to fly uh, continuous descents. And also, finally, if you are able to introduce these approaches at uh, runways that are uh, very much used by airlines, you will save uh, flight time, uh, flight by flight, and uh, by that uh, be able to utilize your aircraft uh, fleet more and more. A little bit about this approach specifically, it's for uh, runway 26 coming in from the western entry point, which is called LTOC in the Stockholm terminal area. Uh, we have initial measurements that uh, we will uh, save up to 50 kilos of uh, fuel on these approaches. They've also been uh, adapted to be able to fit both uh, 737 and Airbus uh, fleets, they are so-called uh, RMP uh, 0.3. And by that, I think we should uh, very soon enter the simulator and see the approach being uh, flown in practice by one of our captains in uh, SAS. Thank you. Welcome to this uh, SAS Boeing 737-700. We're actually sitting in, in a simulator at uh, Oxford Aviation Academy at uh, Arlanda Airport. Uh, this simulator is equipped with identical equipment as the real aircraft. That means that we have two flight management computers updated of the uh, global positioning system and I was asked to follow a prescribed track and also curved tracks. And we're also able to follow a programmed barometric descent called Baro VNAV operation that enables us to descend with almost idle power or low thrust setting. And this enables us uh, to make curved approach with low thrust setting and that's called RNAV RMP approach. And this case will perform an RNAV or a pre-approach in towards Arlanda runway 26 at Stockholm. And by following this approach, we are uh, saving uh, track miles and by that saving up to 50 kilos of fuel per each approach compared with a normal approach into what's this runway. Okay, we are starting the uh, RNAV RMP approach in towards Solanda runway 26, uh, which is actually a curved approach. I'm focusing a bit on our instrumentation on the Boeing 737-700. Here we can see the track which we are following and also the turn in towards the runway. We can see that we are in a continuous descent with our engines in idle, reducing our fuel burn and emission on carbon dioxide. We are now tra tracking the program track following the inf information of the global positioning system. And 
here we can see that we have a required navigation performance of uh, 0.30 nautical miles representing this area and you can see that we are navigating very accurately and the aircraft is tracking the track line and also following the program biometric descent path and with a required navigation performance of 125 feet You can actually see the actual navigation performance is within 64 feet, about 20 meters. Now we are turning, following the prescribed course, still with the idle descent. Starting to configure the aircraft still with idle power, passing the waypoint with a speed restriction of uh, max 185. Now we're starting our final turn into the runway, still on the prescribed track. The required navigation performance, required navigation performance is 0.30 and we're actually tracking 0 0.04. We're now 2,500 feet above the ground, present position, and we are lining up with the runway. Still descending through the programmed barometric descent port. What you actually can see here is the glide flow from the instrument landing system that we are not following. We are following the programmed descent port. And continue to configure the aircraft for landing, reducing speed. We are now lined up with the runway. The indication is that we are traffic the center line and we can also see the track line towards the runway. And the final fun configuration for land. And still an accuracy of uh, 0 0.04 nautical miles in the lateral plane about 50 feet accuracy in the vertical plane and you see we are on the glide path 1000 Still a concept program descent from our barometric info and nearing our minima where we have to see the runway. Still letting the autopilot fly the aircraft towards the runway, tracking the localizer from the ILS, but it's programmed from the GPS and also programmed the sand pod. And taking over. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. 